Hello and welcome to tutorial 146 and a GoPass member asked me to do a tutorial to create a radar screen indicator that displayed the following information. Based on the first, and this is for a five minute bar incidentally, based on the first bar of the day, he wanted to know whether the bar was up or down. He wanted to know the high minus low. He wanted to calculate something which I've called here PERC open, percent open, which is calculated the high minus low divided by the open expressed as a percentage. He wanted to have something which I've called here MALT ATR, and that is the high minus low as a uh, multiple of the ATR. He wanted a gap value, which is calculated by open of the first bar of the day divided by the close of the previous bar minus, when that's calculated, minus one, and that expressed as a percentage. And he wanted also the value of the volume of that first bar of the day divided by the average daily volume and again expressed as a percentage and he wanted to be able to sort these and filter these by by various different means so what i've done i've uh, created a radar screen here and what i'm going to do is show you and demonstrate how the program actually works here we have the program which uh, will be available for download. And let's just go straight into the program, just ignore the, uh, the variables and the inputs for the moment. But uh, the first thing we're doing is we're counting how many completed days are loaded on the chart or on the radar screen. And bear in mind radar screen, each line on radar screen is really like a, a separate chart, only you can't see the, the bars. You just get the information for the last bar. And uh, but what we're doing is we're saying if date, D for date, is not the same as date, the previous bar, then we know that we've gone from one day to another and we can increment the day counter. And then we get to the point where we calculate all these various bits of information we need to calculate. So we say, okay, we need the day counter to be above the daily vol length. Now the daily vol length, that is what we're going to use when we calculate our average daily volume. So we'll be coming back to that, but we need to make sure that we've got that number of days available. Otherwise we can't calculate the average daily volume. We also need to um, recognize if this is the first bar of a new day. And again, remember we're using five minute bars here. So we do some variable resets to start with, and then we do what is probably the most tricky thing of the, the whole program really. And that is just calculating the, uh, the average daily volume. And what we do, we have a loop and uh, we have this loop such as the calc day counter which is a counter that we've got set. We've just reset it to zero. That has got to be less than the daily vol length. So that's going to increment as we go along. And then we've got another counter effectively here, which we've called CTR. And that's going to increment each time we go back a bar. And what we're doing here is we're counting back bars so that we can calculate the total volume. And as we count back bars, if we find a situation where the date of the counter bar is different from the date, of the previous bar, then we increment the calc day counter. And uh, each in each case, we add to something called volsum, which we've also uh, reset to zero before we get into this loop. Volsum plus equals ticks counter. And that's showing us the volume for that particular bar. Now I've used ticks here because we want total volume. And uh, as you may know, the, uh, the volume varies dependent on the type of chart or indeed whether you're using radar screen and or a chart and uh, if you want to know more about that I suggest that you uh, put easy language reserve words related to ticks volume and open interest in the trade station help area and then you'll get a full breakdown but the thing that we're most concerned about here is we're using a stock symbol on radar screen and we're going to be using ticks which is showing total volume we could have actually used volume 
or we could have actually used up ticks. But the reason I've used uh, ticks is because we do do a little bit of work on a chart as well, as, uh, as you'll see in a moment. And for charting, for stock symbols, ticks give the total volume, whereas uh, volume gives for volume traded on upticks. So there's a little bit of extra detail there, but I suggest, you know, go to this yourself if you're not familiar with that information. So this goes through and as soon as the volume is, the total volume is calculated for the number of days we're looking at, number of days being defined again by this input here, daily vol length. As soon as we've counted up that number of days and put them in the total volume, then we can calculate the average daily volume of that uh, volume sum divided by the daily full length. Okay, so um, other things we're doing, because we're looking at the first bar of the day here, we're saying if the uh, close is greater than the open, we're gonna set this uh, variable up down to be equal to up. If the open is greater than the close, in other words, uh, it's a down bar, then we're setting up down to be equal to down. And if the open is equal to the close, then up down, and I've just put in a little hyphen here. And then we do the calculations, which are very straightforward. So what I've called Y bar vol, which is gonna be the thing we're plotting in the second column is just high minus low. Perk open is Y bar vol divided by open. And then we uh, express that as a percentage in radar screen. The MALT ATR is equal to Y bar vol divided by the average true range. And the input to average true range is length game that is uh, an input and then uh, with the uh, percentage daily volume is equal to ticks which is the volume of the current bar divided by the average daily volume which we calculated above and then finally the gap is equal to open divided by close last bar which is the uh, the last bar of the previous day in uh, this situation uh, we calculate that and then after doing so we subtract one and again that is expressed as a percentage in radar screen and then we do the plots and what i've done here is just made sure that the first five plots are only plotted in radar screen and the uh, the daily daily volume i'm plotting on radar screen and a chart and i've done that just so that we can check that the uh, the value is the same in both. And then finally, what I've done, well, not finally, but uh, what I've also done is I've changed the background color of plot one, depending on whether that up down is equal to, is, is equal to up or e equal to down or it's equal to hyphen. And then uh, finally in the program, what I've done is set up a little alerts section. To keep that simple, what I've said is if wide bar val, which is high minus low again, is greater than malt. Malt is a user input, which is five by default in the program. If high minus low, otherwise uh, called in this program, wide bar val is, val is greater than malt, then we do an alert. Okay, so that is the program. Here is what it looks like on radar screen. I've just got a um, Dow Jones industrial average and a few other uh, stocks included. And you'll see that uh, we have the up, down, etc. Now, if I click on a particular line, for example, uh, it's on Google at the moment, but I'm just going to click on this one here, J and J, Johnson and Johnson. And you'll see that if we go back to the start of the day, you'll see the first bar was indeed a doji there where the open is equal to the close and hence we're getting the hyphen. Now, one of the uh, one of the, the ones that I wanted to check mostly in this was the the volume. So if we, or the, uh, the volume divided by average daily volume, which is perhaps the slightly mo uh, trickiest to calculate. And uh, that's showing 6.4% uh, in the radar screen, as if you can see in the program, it's uh, showing 0 0.064 on the chart. So that would be the same. That's uh, not expressed as a percentage, but if it, if it were, then uh, that would be 6.4%. So let me just go through how we can uh, manipulate this radar screen to get the programs at, or rather to get the values sorted in the way that we want. We can go to format, sort, and we can sort, um, various columns and we can keep the data sorted every number of seconds. What I've done is sorted by the H minus L, the perk open and the gap, and they're sorted from the top down. 
So we're sorting by this one, this column first, and then this column within that column, and then the gap finally within the, uh, in other words, if we had a tie, then we would uh, settle that by this column. And if we had another tie, then we'd settle that by the third column. And that's being sorted um, as every few seconds to make sure that it keeps in, in order. Now, because this is only essentially calculating once a day, that's perhaps not quite as uh, important as it might be in other radar screen programs that you create. The other thing we're doing though is because we have the uh, alert set, as you can see here, we're saying if the uh, wide bar value is greater than MALT, we can also sort by the alert. And we do that again, similarly format sort. And uh, what we can do is, for example, instead of sorting by uh, H minus L, we can go here and it'll show us all the different options. But you'll notice down here, we've got tutorial 146 indicator alert. If we put the alert in, and then it will sort based on the alert. And it's actually doing that by the, uh, the reverse order. So let me just go back to format sort. I'm going to change that to the other way, the other way around. And then we'll see that the, uh, the highest values can be found at the top here. And you'll wonder why, why these values here are uh, included. And that's because I've changed the, uh, the value in the input. So if we just go to uh, analysis techniques for all symbols, you'll see that the inputs I have set up here is a multiple of one. If I change that to say five, then we're going to see a slightly different situation because the only value there that's above five is Google. And you'll see in a moment as the program resorts the columns that will then go to the top of the column. You'll also notice that uh, since we have an alert set, I've got a little yellow marker here in the top right. And when an alert has been triggered on a previous bar, and this is in effect looking at yesterday's data because the new market hasn't opened yet, you'll see that we get a little green bar appearing there. And those colors are definable by you if you wish to click and format page and then you can see the alert enabled the yellow the alert triggered green and then the alert pass triggered which i've said as magenta and then you'll see that that is sorted to the top of the column now the other uh, really super important thing that foxes a lot of people when they're using radar screen is setting the additional bars to load so what i'm going to do is just go click on the indicator there and go to tutorial 146 indicator for all symbols. And if we go to general, you'll see that we have various options here. What I've done is set maximum number of bars that he will reference to auto detect. What I've done here is said load additional data for accumulative calculations. And I've worked out that uh, for a five minute bar, bearing in mind the, uh, the number of bars per day, and the number of days that we need based on our input for the average daily average that we need about 1500 bars and that seems to calculate correctly and as we've done we've verified that against a chart so hopefully you will find this useful please uh, subscribe to this youtube channel and also don't forget to go to markplex that's m-a-r-k-p-l-e-x dot com and subscribe to the email list because uh, a lot of information is disseminated through youtube but not all of it so if you want to keep up to date with new tutorials and programs then make sure that you are on the email list okay thank you very much mm -hmm.